man. So the question was, show me your real form. Yes? Are you aware now? Actually, uh, real and form are kind of contradictory. So this, are you aware now? You meet a form, and that is the most real. The most real from which benchmark? From the benchmark of the unchanging. All other forms, all other forms will come and go. But if you say real, then the real does not come and go. So beyond all attributes, beyond all forms, I am the real, you are the real, there are no two. And in service to this real, all forms can arise, do arise. And they can be enjoyed. In a way, this world is for the enjoyment of the Self. But it is only enjoyment as long as it is met from a space of openness. The minute we start considering ourselves to be something limited, you see, it is no longer enjoyment. In fact, it can become an attachment. So 
So the universes are here for your joy. Let them come and go. But my reality is the formless. And of this reality you are aware. This reality is never unknown and yet can never be known. Everything that you can know, that you can perceive, will also come and go. To allow it this space to come and go is non-attachment. To want something to come or to want something to not go is desire. To want something to not come is aversion. To allow everything to come and go. is to remain open.
to interpret any appearance is to resist it. To label any phenomena is to not meet it. To remain open and empty is to be free. And in this openness, the self is completely apparent. It is not hidden. And yet it is not an object of perception. This attention and belief, they work like eyes and hands. Okay, so attention is the eyes and belief is the hands. So watch everything. Let it come and go. But don't pick up any notion, any idea. Because to pick up a notion is to pick up a limitation. To watch it come and go can never lead to any trouble and soon the watching will also become very open, light, universal. But if we see with the intent to hold, to grab, to grasp, then that is what suffering looks like. So your eyes can be open or closed, the eyes of attention, but keep your hands of belief in your pocket.
can you live like this yes Only grasping is suffering. <coughs> These are all the words you need. the mind will come with it doubts trying to convince you that it knows better or you know better but it is the mind itself claiming to be you your pure perception pure perception means the unmixed with any notion there is no distinction between the changing and the changeful between the manifest and the unmanifest the minute you know something you know suffering the instant you think you know something you know separation which is never real but it can seem to be That's why I say that to know even one thing is to know too much. And yet the emptying of our mental knowing is not the end. of the true knowingness this self this awareness for which no distinction ever happen is completely apparent to itself
when you don't know what can bother you and yet the mind thrives on this sort of knowing conceptual knowing as i saw one yesterday said it seems pretty clear but still a lot of questions have to be resolved feeling like the final conclusion will come in this way and if there is too much fear you feel like you cannot do without knowing at least one thing then know that all is the master's grace guru kripa kevalam In fact, if you have to know something, then know that all is the master itself. Because in reality, there is no distinction between God, Guru, and self. So if it feels too much to not know anything, then know this: all is the master alone. what term you use does not matter whether you say all is the self all is the absolute all is brahman all is the master it doesn't matter this is the same as to remain in the unborn to throw away all distinctions it's all various ways of saying the same thing basically to get rid of your conceptual garbage
how to remain open and empty. Any feedback from your experiments on this? What works? Or what doesn't work? Guru Kripa Kivlam works. Open and empty means just a simple allowing. Allowing all things to come and go. Not grasping. I'm looking forward with curiosity and wonder also. Not yes. grasping it, yes. but just looking forward to whatever. Just with a sense of wonder. Wonder is like openness anyway. Rather than maybe. So make no distinctions. Make no distinctions. Distinction means separation, is it? And we can see by an, any notion, then that is a distinction, a separation. In fact, the mind is just a merchant of distinctions, merchant of duality. <coughs> said that uh, for this e- for this year she just excuse to say it <laughs> I just want a little bit of your time every day to remain open and empty just 24 hours every day this doesn't mean that uh, if you open and empty for 23 hours, then you feel guilty about the one hour and next day you're spending five hours feeling guilty about one hour yesterday. <laughs> Just if you feel that you're caught in something, don't worry. Don't do post-mortem judgments. Yes. If it comes again and again. Is it? Yes. So for a while it might seem to issue. Is it? And that, that's okay. A little bit of this seeming struggle is okay. You are not getting into a fight with the mind, no opposition, just allowing it to come and go. But if something seems to grab you, something that you think is truly representative of something, and we have looked at all of these examples, when we play this game, it's just a thought. That's what this game is about. Is it? What what do we end up buying as a true representation of either manifest or unmanifest? Is it? 
that is just a thought because no thought can really represent it isness cannot be represented with a thought So for a while it might seem like our life has become this game with just a thought. And that's okay. everything that uh, we are thinking to be valid is just the horn of a hair read some of that I will read a little from uh, the Ribu Gita chapter 8. Ribu says, I shall explain to you the hollowness of the world. Now, you have to hear this as true. You, see? you have to hear this quite literally. You see? Not metaphorically, not uh, as a tool to come to some state. Just hear it quite literally as you were, as you would probably hear what Google Maps. <laughs> so don't try to interpret it. Don't try to say this is what it means. It's just saying as as directly as possible. The sage is telling us. I shall explain to you the hollowness of the world, which is akin to a horn of a hair. Is it? So, how would it be akin to a horn of a hair? To not exist, to just be a notion, an idea. This is hard to attain in all the worlds. Listen with an alert mind. Hard to attain in the sense that it is rare. Is it? Even for those who keep hearing this, they do not seem to assimilate it. They seem to still give some reality you see, to these notions. So, some very direct verses are coming after this. Just hear them as directly as possible. Whatever trace of this world one hears or one sees of it, the form that is seen and the form of seer are all like the horn of a hair. So, it is not making any distinctions. Whatever one hears or sees, that seems to be this world, is akin to the horn of a hair. The idea of the seen and the seer, you see, this distinction is also illusory, like the horn of a hair. Any of these verses is enough, actually. 
earth, water, fire, air, space, mind, intellect, ego and transcendental life are all like the horn of a hare. So including the primordial vibration, including the sense I am, including the light of consciousness itself, the sage is including. Earth, water, fire, air, space, mind, intellect, ego and transcendental light are all like the horn of the hair. So what is left? Nothing and everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Can't say nothing and everything. Is like <coughs> <laughs> 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 nothing. Even nothing. Even nothing is horn of a hair because we can have this like nothing idea. And this one is a bit tricky to grapple with because we feel like. At least that conclusion must be valid. So if you're saying nothing and everything in that sense that not even nothing or and not even everything, then that's fine. All opposites are gone. All notions. So this nothing is not the absence of something. It's not that what is left is just like an absence. Even the absence is absent. It's a form. Still. It's still a conceptual form in a way. Still a still a object of our intellect. So earth, water, fire, air, space, mind, intellect, ego, and transcendental life are all like the horn of a hair. Now upon hearing this many times we still have some idea of space or something like that. You see? But, the, but the sage has said space is also illusory. So you won't lose anything if you lose these notions. You won't lose anything if you lose these notions. You won't lose anything if you lose these distinctions. Destruction, birth, truth, the world and heavenly systems, merit, sin, victory and delusion are all like the horn of a hare. Destruction, birth, truth, the world and heavenly systems, merit, sin, victory and delusion are all like the horn of a hare. Lust, anger, greed, delusion, pride, delirium, infatuation, steadfastness, guru, disciple, teaching and such are all like the horn of a head. I, you, the world, etc. The beginning, the end, the middle, the past, the future and the present are all like the horn of the head. There is no distinction between I and you. There is no distinction between I, you and the world. No distinction between beginning, end, middle, past, future, present. No distinction between guru, disciple, teaching. The cross body, subtle body, cause, effect and what little of seeing and seeing there is are all at the horn of a head.
definitely explore it within you because when the mind comes with these offers of i and you and yesterday and tomorrow and beginning and end and cause and effect you see then you will see through them Tell me something that you know. Or tell me something that you think is not the horn of a hair. self is it this is a good point this is what i want you to look at how is this known this is the question being asked for so many days is it so the knowing of the self is it the same way as the knowing of the world the knowing of all of these things with the sage is saying cause and effect time guru disciple is it the same way that you know the self is it many know it that way also you see they feel like they know it that way <coughs> and they rest on that but that is the spiritual ego is it they think that they know it or they have known it you see but that is the spiritual ego so that is why i have been so strong over the past few days saying how is this actually known is it the self versus all of these conceptual notions so to have a concept the self or to have the concept awareness or absolute or brahman does that to just have the concept would that mean that we know the self and the true knowing which you are speaking of presumably can that ever become false or unknown mm. so that knowing is always known whatever can be known in this way can never be truly representative of the self so this is like putting the thread in the needle is it it's a very subtle point because you might make an experience out of the self you might make a conclusion out of the self you might make a any sort of notion of the self is it but this kind of knowing is not to know the self it can never be known in this way and the true way in which it is always known is always here always apparent so now tell me something that you know
the enjoyer, the object, and the enjoyment, ideal and non-dual characteristics, tranquility, inquiry, happiness, are all at the horn of a head. Ethical regulations, physical restraints, breath control, and discourses on such things, movement, motion, thoughts, are all like the horn of a head. Ears, eyes, body, lineage, secrecy, inertia, hurry, Shiva, beginning, end, longing for emancipation, are all like the horn of a head. Any objection to any of these? <laughs> it's not an objection, but okay. it feels like um, <laughs> if you go to the first first verse, then there's n- you can leave everything. Mm-hmm. You see, you see, it's everything's finished over there. Right? But if you like in the play, like I'm not, I don't know what I'm saying. It's mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Ob- objection is that there is <laughs> an apparent longing or or like. When we are like the master so is longing here. for emancipation. No, not no. the emancipation okay. part. It's the Hari and Shiva. Hari part. and Shiva. Part. It's a, it's not to the emancipation mm. at all. Okay, it's it's a feeling of this where this presence comes, and then you really feel that sense of separation, which then you say, okay, you know, you do make no distinctions or whatever, but it feels like. Well, this feels like when you just said that, okay, the God, Guru, and I forgot what else. Yeah, the self is all the same. That if you feel yeah. like to not know anything yeah. is too much, yeah. and it feels too fearful or something, then know just one thing. You see? <coughs> and that could be that all is God, God Guru, Self, it's the same thing. You see? Or all is the Master of Grace. You see? Now, that thorn is, it, is also ultimately just a thorn. That's why I said that if it feels like it is too much to be so fully empty and I need to have at least one thing to hold on to, is it, feel like I need one branch or one thorn, is it, then you can have one of these. But it is not to mean that actually it is that. Is it? it is not actually that that distinction is true or something like that that there is any sort of inherent meaning or duality in anything is just not true so when we are rid of even that notion so let's put it another way is the real real only because there is a notion of it being real? No. no. So if you discard the notion of it being real, will it cease to be real? No. But whatever the notion might be, and as well crafted as the notion might be, can it really represent the real? No. Isn't it? So that is why as real as any notion might seem, at best is a provisional truth, you see, because it can never truly represent reality, the reality of the real, you see, and the real, we might feel that if I throw away the notion of the real, then the real will go away, then what kind of real would that be if it is so dependent on having the notion of it, it is supposed to be the great unchanging, isn't it, so how can it be that the notion having it, you see, is uh, is detrimental to its own reality can't be you see? so having it or not having it so to see that even this the greatest that you might say all is Brahman you see? is also just a notion not truly representing reality you see? because even in the word all you see, there is duality you see? there is separation the one and many, these notions are there. So, it is not possible to capture this reality in any notional fashion and it does not go 
when we are rid of everything that we think is right or true you see because it is by definition that which does not come and go so therefore even the highest notions which the sage has enumerated beautifully you see there is no distinction between them and the lower seeming notions He's not even making a hierarchy of notions he's saying throw them all out throw them all out and don't be scared that the real will go it is not going to be like throwing the baby out of, out with the bath water we have confused the bath water to be the baby you see we have confused our notions to be the the real our notions of reality are not reality that is why i have been emphasizing so much about true knowing versus this notional knowing because we are not yet able to distinguish between the two and we often confuse that that's why it's important to clarify what we mean when we say all that i know is the self is it or all that i know is god or guru what do we actually what are we actually saying that i have a concept of it is it or i had some past experience of it i have some memory of it is it is that what we are saying or is there something more immediate empty of any representation so can the notion of hari and the notion of shiva really represent hari or shiva mm. is no it? is it so are holding on to the idea shiva help shiva in what way it's obstruction i is it because it will have some boundary around whatever representation we have because that's why what makes it a representation even the representation that it is boundless is a boundary see our intellect will not understand what i'm saying even the representation that something is boundless is to give it too much quality you see it is too boundless to even have the notion boundless you see so to say all is shiva is not in service to shiva but at best is that like can be a useful last notion to have the last provisional truth that we can keep is it but even this thorn will have to be thrown away as you become so empty of all notions even of that of the absolute that is why i love so much this uh this is ribu saying that away from the duality of even i am brahman is it because brahman is not dependent on me thinking i am brahman is it but me thinking i am brahman only makes a representation of it which will always have some distinction so in this way you can understand the the intent so to speak the prayojan the intent of the sage is to empty you from all notions of reality but to introduce you to reality and get rid of this um uh, sort of seeming obstruction this seems to be the source of suffering individuality uh limitation so if you have no notion about anything at all what is up what is down what is constriction what is openness what is um life what is death what is yesterday what is tomorrow 
how would you struggle? No notion of freedom or bondage. Now which notion are you willing, unwilling to give up on? You may think that that is your medicine, but that is your poison. One you can keep, but besides that one, which notion are you unwilling to give up on? That is good and bad. That is good and bad. You see? That is a potent poison. Mm. But I know it is deeply conditioned. You see, in our originalness, in our in our infantile nature, in our childlike innocence, we were not, we did not have that distinction. So, if you are exposing in this way, then uh, see how much openness you can muster towards not living with that, not living with that. So, it's very, very. Uh, almost the basis of all conditioning is this good and bad good and bad what else I am a human being I am a human being you see no bigger lie <laughs> no bigger lie you see and uh, like I keep saying that uh, we feel like it is arrogant to say I am God but to say that I am limited or I am uh, a human being or some just an aspect you see, or something with some boundaries, something with birth and death, that is more arrogant. See? That is more arrogant. But our conditioning has taught us the opposite. You see? Our conditioning has taught us that if, if I say that I could separate from God and become something which has birth and death, you see, then I am being hum- humble. You see? But this is arrogance to say that I could have, could have separated. You see? Because the prodigal son is based around this whole concept. You see? That actual separation really happened and will I then be accepted back into the oneness, accepted back into my father's house, so to speak. You see? So, this separation has never happened. But um, this notion that I am something, whether that something is human being or body mind or whatever we say, you see, it's just emotion. So, master as much openness as you can about handing this over. You see, but if uh, because we, as you continue to stay in satsang, uh, this will not seem so real. It will be taken away from you. This idea that you are human being you see? It's not true. It is just not true. You see? And then, okay, so let's not even get into that <laughs> then. What, what other notion? Me and you. Huh? Me and you. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Willing to hand it over? Mm-hmm. Don't judge it whether you have handed it over or not. You see, don't make a judgment about yourself. But at least is there a willingness to hand it over? Yeah. Yes. Willing to hand over good and bad? <laughs> yes or no? Right and wrong. Right and wrong. Can't. We can't or you can't? I can't. You can't. So, if it was possible, you would be willing to hand it over? If it was possible, I would still think... Um, Maybe wrong to murder somebody. Say murder happens. I surrender. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what what uh, we feel like. These are the notions that we can't give up on. These are not horn of a hair. Everything else is mm. okay. It's good to spot at least. It's good to spot. Then me and you. 
Judgment. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> judgment of um, it seems to be related to when you pull one, the other comes. Yeah. So interpretation like that? Interpretation, judgment like that. Yeah. So right what and wrong. Yeah. Right and wrong. Mm-hmm. So what is right, what is wrong? Is it related to true and false? Also related to good and bad? Yes. yes. So, willing to hand over or no? <laughs> so, you saying that... Let's see what you are saying. You are saying that the world is horn of the hair, all that appears, comes and goes, is unreal, is horn of the hair, except right and wrong. Is it like this? Or we are saying actually all of that is also not horn of the hair. So are we saying that all of this Vedanta stuff, is it? Like what comes and goes is not real, all of this, is it? every appearance, is uh, is uh, uh, you see Maya all of this stuff you see is all of this is one of the hair except the right and r- wrong aspect of it or that because right and wrong cannot be unreal therefore all of that also must be real real or unreal huh? <laughs> <laughs> you become very zen for me. <laughs> <laughs> Real and unreal are itself one of them. Right and wrong. Exactly. Very good. Human being willing to hand over? Yes. Very good, very good. Even if there is no replacement on offer, you see, which means what? Okay, I take the notion I am a human being from you, but I am not offering a new notion in response. You see? That is the thing. If I was to give you another notion, then at least that is some. So I don't want to offer you any conceptual balm. Is it? I don't want to say, okay, you are not a human being, but you are the self, or something like that. Is it? Because that is just words. Then, is it? so hand over this idea that I am a human being, and it's okay to not know what I am. It's okay to not know. This is this is it. Meet this. Meet this. Uh, struggle, meet this um, like wobbliness. There is no truth that can fit into your paradigm of being a human being. Is it? There is no truth which can really fit into that paradigm, into that lens of human beingness. Is it? And uh, it's like the glass that you're f- trying to fill the ocean in, you cannot. So lose this glass and you'll see that the ocean is just there. But again, <laughs> don't, no, don't take all this metaphors too seriously. Just lose the glass. <laughs> or at least be willing to lose it. Don't just be willing to lose it and don't judge yourself on whether you lost it or not. Willing to lose it, yes? Yes. yes. Okay. That's good enough. The premise is that uh, in certain circumstances and background, I would behave exactly the same as a murderer. Mm-hmm. There is no judge. can be judge you. So that oh. separation I want to hold, you know. Not do it, but somebody else does. So, explain what is not the horn of the hair in this? 
No, you ask me if that's like a pet thing, like I will not behave as low uh-huh, as I think uh-huh, as I somebody see, else. That is the notion that you don't want to. Though I probably would in the same circumstances. We don't really know like, actually. Yes. I and yet it is that. a scary thought to feel like I might yeah, be just like this one. Easy. Yeah. That I am bad then. Yeah? Yeah? That I don't comply with something. That you don't comply with what? That some idea that yeah. I am something. Yeah. That I am right and wrong, that I am wrong. Yes. But to step out of these opposites. That I am not right. Yeah, not right. Or I am saying no mad. Even these are either end is just notional, isn't that it? That I am anything. Yeah. Yeah. That I am something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the notion? The idea that I have to do something in order to realize the self. It's the really idea that I have to do something to realize the self. Yeah, it's very, very popular. Very persistent. Very persistent, you say. So, willing to hand it over? Yes. There is a possibility it could be horn of a hair? <laughs> yes. yes. Yours? This, uh, this, uh, this idea of separation or like knowing what God is and not just holding that. Right, knowing how, what do you know about God? Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying, see, what I, you know, like what you can, maybe from I don't know when, you conceive of um, what God is and what what is your conception of what God? It's the one who's always there, always. Um, <laughs> this, this really makes me so depressed. That this what? one give it up. You, you know this love for Krishna. No. Thinking that I have to die and be one with him or Is the thinking that you have to die for Krishna, the love for no, Krishna? No, 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 not that I have to die for him. Mm. That I just kind of came from somewhere else and then that I just want this to finish now and I just want to go back to What, where what notion nonsense. represents love? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't. This, is, uh, this not the notion of like you know, like this longing and then this sense of, you know, s- that it's God's far away. And not, and even, not, not even exactly that, but it's like, you know, th- He's always there, but you're not like the same with Him or her, or that you have to, like it's like a friend or a father or, a, you know, that, that kind of a, a, like a relationship. This is a classical Advaita Advaita argument. Isn't it? I don't know. Forget what about both. Yeah, and yeah. So, so this, this like, you know, where you say, where, where you say, just be open. So then I just try and be open to the idea that maybe this whole thing is just. No, but clear. open does not mean that now you have the valid conclusion about it. No, to just be open to let this idea yeah. go away. Yeah. I mean, and to not hold on to it as if it's the truth that yes, I have known exactly. or experienced. Yes, yes. That way, open. Yes. Yeah. So, if there's an idea that if I let go of the idea of my love for Krishna, then the love for Krishna goes away, then actually that is not love for Krishna anyway. No, no, no I was it not. It is just an idea of a love. Yeah. Is it? yeah. So, I'm just saying the idea can go. Yeah, man, it's not that my love for Krishna will go away. Yeah. It was that, that this, this love feels painful when the idea that he's separate from you or he's somewhere else or something you know what i'm saying then that creates just this this intense longing it's like this, i don't want anything else now you know so you forget know, about so. separate and oneness
Are you willing to hand over all notions about it? Anything? The same thing. He feels like, like I need to be like observed or absorbed, by absorbed, absorbed into God or something mm. or mm. completely disappear. Mm. Yes, but you see that these notions will not help absorption or disappearance. See? Because if it was just that, if I kept saying I have to be absorbed, I have to be absorbed, then absorption would happen, or I have to be one with the God, then a oneness would come. You see, then all the sages would be advising that. When this thought comes, like it, it comes with a, the sensation of a pain or something like that. Yeah. So then we don't feel like it's just a thought because it is accompanied with other byproducts. Then we feel like it's something more than a thought, yeah. but it is just a thought. Are you open to that possibility that it could be? Even if it was true like that, you see, you see, now what you're being pointed to see, is um, something more immediate, something which is not talking about leading you to the future, it is not showing you a path, it is showing you what is already here. So, is there a little bit of willingness to see that even these ideas of cause and effect and path and leading could be horn of a hair or no? Because otherwise what happens is, if you look at all of these representations, what are we representing ourselves as? We are back into limitation, back into the idea of me. But good, if there is willingness to let it go. These are deeply held conditions, so although uh, I might be saying it just like easily like this, I know that some of them could be just deeply ingrained conditions which you may struggle with for a bit, but at least we have to shine the light on it and say this, this what you feel actually may feel that this is even helping you, actually is just the voice of limitation, just the the idea of giving too much reality to this appearance or uh, pretending as if we know something about any of this when we don't in that way. Is it? it is just like using induction to conclude that this is how it is. is it? Like inducing based on so-called prior experience or something like that and saying that this is how things work or don't work. So the idea of journey is not horn of the hair. It is real. Check and then come back and reconfirm. Mm. And uh, the way 
my place on it is initially it used to be oh why this journey and now it's like it's such a joy, such a joy to check mm. and confirm it still you know. but there is still that yeah. because who are you in that in that whole representation who are you good, good to see willing to hand over Everything, the world, earth, water, <laughs> fire, space, <laughs> everything is horn of the hair, but money is in horn. <laughs> I don't know, I'm making light of it just to, yeah, just to get us to look. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's kind of interesting that you pick up that verse, because as soon as you finish that verse, you know, it's like, okay, money but you need money to buy this <laughs> you know, I, I'm not kidding, this is what it's actually. Let's look at the words. So, it's like, yeah, water is free, sunlight is free, but you need money to buy banana. <laughs> <laughs> Earth, water, fire, air, space. See? What is not made up of the, all of this? These are the five elementals, no? the main elements. So, everything is, um, in India they say like that. Panchabhuta or Panchatattva. So these are the elements. Everything is made up of this. So if the these elements themselves are horn of a hair, is it? then how do they make the exception for money? Plastic money or notes or uh, bank account numbers? Or <laughs> I'm just looking at it. Coins? Metal? <laughs> idea. <laughs> huh? idea. Idea. Of money. idea. But what does it represent? Is it the idea of money, what does it represent? It represents some security, some yes. it, some needs, or some comfort, ease. Some, it has many correlations that have been drawn with it. Is it. And that's why I was saying that as we hear these words, take them literally and not metaphorically. Is it. We've taken our metaphors too literally and our <laughs> literals too metaphorically. Mm-hmm. So, earth, water, fire, air, space, mind, intellect, ego, and transcendental light are all like the horn of a hair. And I'm also presuming that uh, it's not say, you're not saying uh, money for the entire, all universal beings, right? You're saying money in my account or money that I could could have. It's not just overall a concept of just globally. <laughs> it's not loka, samastaha, sukhi no bhavantu. Like may all beings be at ease or in peace. It is more like my, my account, is it? So then uh, I, you, the world, etc. The beginning, the end, the middle, the past, the future, and the present are all like the horn of the hair. Lust, anger, greed, delusion, pride, delirium, infatuation, steadfastness, guru, disciple, teaching, and and all like that. And such are all like the horn of the hair. It's like that Satsang is Guruji one thing, that uh, everything is good, there is so much peace, there is so much joy also, everything is fine, but still I have no money. <laughs> no money. So what is the first one? Journey and money. Both you are willing to hand over the concept. So not the money, the concept of the money. <laughs> Indirect way to collect donation. <laughs> you have a concept of money? Hand it over. <laughs> you are too attached to your money. attachment to money, I'll help you get rid of it. <laughs> what, the attachment? No, the money. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> That's what everyone says, whatever works. <laughs> 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 so, your problem over money, that can be instantly resolved. <laughs> Secure God. <laughs> he emphasizes the me as if there could be a confusion about that. <laughs> okay, I'm talking about security for the me. Of course, for the me. Who else? <laughs> <laughs> Still all the horn of the hair. <laughs> Whatever layers might be. <laughs> like also this uh, and having money to like help others mm. is also on. Yeah, yeah, that's a big horn of the hair, help others. <laughs> so expose that also and uh, hand it over. Help others in any mm. way, not just like mm. any idea. That's them. really um, something that idea. Huh? Help others. Do worship. Yes. Do worship, but also others. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the problem is you, and then one more problem. In help others, yeah. there's so much others. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? <laughs> always others. Always <laughs> hand it to. <laughs> When you have allowed this Guru Kripa Kevlin, yes. and all notions I can surrender and merge, all knowledge, all notions, everything can be. And that itself, it, if it is self merging or self dissolving, that's what I mean. Trying to be healthy or eat healthy or breathe good air. Or yeah, everyone has the notion, yeah, but how many are doing it? Rapidly, <laughs> <laughs> deteriorated that. I have many notions of yoga and eating healthy. None of it seems to be translating into. <laughs> so, how we know that upon handing over the notion, that so seeming movement will not happen in our perception? You see, we don't know these things. And we don't know that having the notion is helping those things happen in our perception also. We have a sense of what I'm saying. We, because the resistance to handing over the notion, be it the notion of Krishna or of being healthy or good and bad, can, it can feel like, but without this, there will be no Krishna or there will be no good or bad or there will be no health or something like that. You see, the mind has convinced us that all of this rests on our conceptual knowledge of it. Certainty of death. Yeah. Certainty of death is a notion that you believe in strongly, it's not horn of the hair. <laughs> it's horn of the hair, I it's think. Horn. Yeah, it's horn of the not born, you don't not die. Born, what dies, yeah. <laughs> but Krishna doesn't feel like a notion, Father. that's the problem also. It just Whatever notion you have about Krishna, you give it to Okay, so you take that then. <laughs> no, it's the, it feels more real than I feel real. I mean, it's like saying, if I have to remove him, I have to remove that myself. That eye that feels real is completely okay, unreal okay, anyway. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that thinking. is not saying much. <laughs> no, it pains in my So the notion that Krishna is real mm -hmm. and the notion that the Krishna is unreal, both you have to give to me. Okay. 
That's fair enough. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Since the beginning, all notion this way or that way. Yeah. Remember that everything that I'm saying, I'm asking for it and it's opposite also. Okay. Is it? So you are left unburdened by all of this position, either this way or that way. You see, how you know that it might be, okay, I don't want to say that. <laughs> so it, we can't predict just because I have the notion Krishna is real. Yeah. You see, how you know wha- what effect you're having on, that notion is having on the perception of Krishna. But you are calling that Krishna is real a notion, I don't consider it a notion. But now you're saying it may be a notion and your mama said it fully agree. Everything that can be held on to and given up on okay. is a notion. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I didn't have experience giving it up. Now I give it up. Because you see the possibility of giving it up, that's why it's poking. No? That how will I be without this? I've really hung on to this. But you idea. said I have to give up that it is or it is not. Exactly. Both. Exactly. So, in my heart and... Honestly, saying some, I'm still holding it on. I'm just, okay, that's your problem. <laughs> Not mine. As long as there's a willingness to hand it over. Okay. What is your first notion? I don't I've know. given you a license for one. I've said, I'd give up your second one. <laughs> she missed that whole conversation. <laughs> I said that if it feels like too much, yeah. And I need to have one notion at least. Yeah. You see? Then I give you a license for one. I'm not going to tell you that it is ultimately mm. true. But uh, if it feels like it is too much to hand over everything, 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 and I need one, and I've recommended Guru Kripa Kevalam, but you don't have to pick up that one. You can pick up any one. It's not like making distinctions with for like. So your first one is make yeah, no distinctions. Yeah. So huh? when I yeah. just don't make anything, yes. whatever. Then what are you distinguishing with Krishna? And no, but that seems to be in some special pocket. I don't know That's where. Right. These pockets have to be <laughs> emptied. <laughs> this These yeah. pockets have to be emptied because. Um, <laughs> on one hand, our main main thing is make no distinction, and then we are already distinguishing Krishna and me. Yeah. Yeah, Krishna and you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Either they are both are there, there is no you or Krishna. So if you make no distinctions, then that leaves no room for any other notions. Or you, if you want to pick that one, that all is Krishna, it's fine. I'm fine with that. No. I just want to check with you whether I'm, I'm doing this, make no distinctions correctly. Okay. Because my mind can make up some story no. about that as well, okay. right? To make so no distinctions. distinctions. So okay. whatever, what I mean, you? in front of the eyes, or behind the eyes, wherever, whatever. So no front, is, no back. Yeah, yeah. So whatever appears, there's just no judgment about it. And even if a judgment comes, even that's not... Uh, made no distinction about that, though this is a judgment or not. It's just... Letting go. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I. Even thinking. appearance, not appearance. <coughs> yeah. Okay, may I not take on that one? Yeah, it's just. Even happening, not happening, appears doesn't appear. Me, other. All of these distinctions gone. Guru, disciple. God, me. What a value left. What a value left. There's no distinction for value. This is what is this.
so also the notion of handing over all the notion yes yes, yes that's also mm-hmm. a notion yeah. <coughs> although I have no idea what it means to make no distinction I feel like I have to pick up the notion first to even drop it yes and empty when you are empty nothing there is no instruction needed no pointing needed These are just pointers, notions, provisional thorns that we are using to come to this openness, to the unborn. Here even any of this does not mean anything. Mean itself doesn't mean anything. Like it's not meaningless. Meaningless. Yeah. Like meaning or meaningless? Like the horn of the hair mm-hmm. is like meaningless because it's illusory. It's just like like a made up idea. But uh, the horn of a cow or something like that is like a representative of truth or something like that. It is not meaningless. It is not meaningless, yes. Not meaningful nor meaningless. Because meaning itself loses meaning. Is it? No, we can look at this for a moment because it's good to see. Is it? So we can have this idea that I am a good person, for example, <coughs> seem to be meaningful. You see? Then it can feel like, okay, but I'm not a person at all, so that idea has become so meaningless. You see? So, but when usually it is said in the world it has become meaningless, a new meaning has been given to it that it is now meaningless. You see? That it is nonsense or something like that. You see? So, but to withdraw the term meaning itself, like withdraw the intellect from something, where it just does not apply meaning or meaninglessness. In a way, it's to say like it is just what it is, neither meaningful nor meaningless. So, to withdraw our intellectual capacity to give it meaning or to give it the meaning that it is meaningless also. You see, both are meaning, you know. Like meaning, it is. it has meaning means something, it is meaningless means something. But to, for, ni- for it to be neither, of that meaning is, it? is what I'm saying. <laughs> no. So all of these games, all of these experiments, all of these inquiries that we are doing are are pointing in the same direction whether you call it it's just a thought or whether you expose it as this is just not horn of the hair this is real or something like that it's all the same thing we're just looking at what notions we feel like are still uh, truly representing reality what notions are truly representing reality and you may surprise yourself as you look at these because you've been immersed in uh, Advaita Satsang for quite some time. So, but don't have any of that sort of baggage and say, I can't have this notion now. What will Ananta think of me or what will everyone, the Sangha, feel that I am still carrying this idea after being in Satsang for so long? It's nothing to do with that. Just if you feel like it is a true representation of reality, expose it. Sometimes our notions will become very smart, like the notions will become, I am so notionless now. 
even to play this game i have to pick up a notion there was also notion yes. so so keep exposing it like this it's good i am not making a hierarchy of notions you see, i am not making it your notion say what you still have that how long have you been is not like see? all are saying like ribu is saying last greed uh, delusion <coughs> hari shiva guru disciple all together he is not saying this is special this is not special this is this category this is that category a notion is a notion thought is a thought doesn't really matter But people achieve the status like Ramana. Yeah. The natural tendency then is to do good, be good. I mean, they don't have a notion or an intention, but it's just a natural. <laughs> uh, I think. Let's see how it uh, turns out in your case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I really want to know. <laughs> you see, but I can tell you that. Um, for your presence to be a light of good so called good in this world uh, you see we don't need to have that idea that i must be doing this way or that way see? because many 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 much of humanity most we can say of humanity has that notion but is but what plays out is not really representative of that notion that they were carrying is In fact, in the Bible, they say something similar. They say, "The road to hell is paved with good intention." Everybody has the intention, but they don't actually bring that into action. Anyway, I'm not saying that. <laughs> Just say, we are speaking in a different way. Yeah. Father, when we speak about this meaning and meaningless, yes. so if we say this is the whole thing <coughs> is the the horn on the hair's the head, head, then. any question about giving in meaning or not giving in meaning or any opinion about it is just old yes. redundant thing isn't it yes. so yes. that when i but, but that's a, yeah in the sense that as long as you also see that horn of the hair that all of this is horn of a hair is also horn of a hair <sighs> you see that not too much is given to that even the sage said that all of this scripture and every the thing in this chapter is also horn of a hair so horn of a hair is also horn of a hair <laughs> thank you all so much for being in satsang today sadguru shri muji baba ki jai jai sadguru shri mata ji ki jai guru kripa ke bol